Hi everyone. So this is the uh, quick and easy beginner tutorial for all the basics in Unity. First of all, I have a few Unity installs here. I'll be using the 2022 version. It uh, doesn't really matter which version of this uh, currently. Um, but inside of projects, when you have your hub up and running and you have Unity installed, please click new project. And then in here, we'll just choose the 3D built-in render pipeline, a standard core model for a project, and then you give it a new name. You need to kind of decide where you want it to be saved. And then of course you can choose if you want it to be at an organization or if you want it to be connected to the Unity Cloud. I'll just dis deselect this and create a project. It takes a second or two before Unity starts up and loads and everything, but this is only a first time thing. Of course, the larger your project will get, the more loading time it'll take every time you need to open the project anew. But currently it's building the the full package and everything and downloading stuff and all of that stuff. So when Unity first starts up, you might see this layout, which is the standard default layout that Unity ships with. I really prefer doing the two by three layout just because I have a better overview. So up here in the top right hand corner, there is the two by three button that's going to reset the layout. The only thing you now need to change is inside of project here, it currently shows as like a open folder kind of thing where you need to click into the hierarchy. Um, if you click the little dotted kebab menu up here and choose one column layout, you'll be able to see everything as like a unfoldable uh, option here. First things first, we have a hierarchy here, which is where we have all of our assets that we also have in our scene. Down here is where we see our game view. Essentially, we see through the camera in this view down here. This is also where you can play the game when you uh, execute it. Um, so the hierarchy reflects everything inside of the scene. The project itself reflects everything that you have inside of the folder structure that Unity has provided. You can always right click any option up here. So being a subfolder like scenes here or assets, and then you can go into show in Explorer or show in Finder if you're on a Mac. This will open up your, this will open up your file explorer and show you the project where you can go into uh, and see all of these files that you have added. Let's start with something uh, simple, just adding a plane out here so that we can start navigating around and I can show you how everything works. So right click in the hierarchy, go to 3D object and add a plane. It's gonna just add a flat plane to the scene, which is just one big polygon. It's gonna ask you what it should be called. I'm just gonna click away so that I can see that it's still called plane. The way that you navigate in Unity is by essentially moving your mouse and uh, using that as navigation, but you also have the option of using arrow keys or WASD, but it requires you to hold your right button on your mouse. So when you hold your right button on your mouse, you can see that your cursor changes into this eye view, meaning that you're looking around. When you are looking around like this and you start using WASD, you will be able to move forward, backwards, left and right. So kind of like just flying uh, around in an FPS game with no clip on or something like that. If you, while you're holding right click and moving around, if you use your scroll wheel, you can see that I can change a factor here. This is the speed factor, meaning that if I crank that up, I'll be moving a lot faster. And if I move it down, I am very slow. So this just means that when you are in like tight spaces or in like a game view where you have a lot of assets, you can change the speed to reflect your movement around in that uh, tight space. You can also just, of course, use scroll wheel, middle mouse button, which is my, in my case is also the scroll wheel to grab and move around like this. And then you can always like move around objects. One button that is in particularly very important for you to know about is clicking any object and then on your keyboard hit F. So as soon as you hit F for focus, you will be focusing on that one object. If you click again, you will zoom in tighter. So a wide focus and a tight focus. It just helps uh, getting to the objects that you need to see. It also resets your camera's zoom factor and everything so that it's easier for you to move when you have focused on that specific object. There is also the option of just over here in the hierarchy, double clicking the object, and that's also gonna activate that focus option. So a few shortcuts just to get those out, of, those out of the way. Q is the hand, meaning moving around. W is your move tool, meaning moving objects around. E is for uh, rotating objects in, well, different axes. And of course, every time you're in the center of any of these gizmos. It means that you can grab either all axes as well at once or two at the same time like I can here with the move tool. So in this case, I would just be freely rotating the object. R is then for scale. In this case, I would like to scale my 
plane up. So I'm just going to scale it up a bit. T is the rectangle tool, meaning that you can grab rectangle corners and move them around. And then uh, Y is the everything in one kind of weird gizmo thing. So if you like that sort of stuff, you can. So Unity is made up of units, but it never tells you what those units are. But one unit in Unity is one meter, meaning if I create a 3D object cube right here, it's currently underground, meaning I need to reset its transform because it has reset to where my camera had its focus point. Over here in the inspector, you can see all of the settings for any given object that you have selected. In this case, you can see that the transform has a position of, uh, well, minus Y at least, so it's below ground. So in this case, I can click the little kebab menu again, and I can choose reset. Now it's going to be reset to the center of the project. So zero by zero by zero. It also resets, of course, rotation and scale. So uh, if you had any values there, they will also be gone. I can now grab the green arrow and I can move this up. If I hold control or command for that matter, I'm going to move up in factors. Uh, I think it's 0.25 or something like that, meaning I can have it being flush against the ground like this. So now I know that this box is one by one by one meter in size. So anytime I add other objects, I can scale them to this. You could also go into the scale of this object and set it to be two, meaning it's now a two meter high box. And if I move it up, now it is a box that kind of represents the size of a human. We already have a directional light and a main camera. We'll be deleting the main camera in just a second, but I just want to show you that the directional light, if you start rotating that, you are changing the time of day. And of course, you can also see that the shadows change. Um, this is also something that you can, of course, rotate and change with programming later on if you want to. So let's add a bit of color to this ground. So these assets here, I'm just going to drag and drop these files into the assets folder. Unity will start to load and process these and import them. Sometimes you get a question regarding normal map. Sometimes it doesn't quite catch it. So we need to go in there manually. I'm going to show you that in just a second. But click fix now when this prompts you. So I'd like this stone background color here to be my, my ground. Just a quick note, uh, in the bottom of the inspector, there's this uh, bar here with the double lines. If you grab that and drag it upwards, you can see a preview of whatever you have selected. So this goes, goes for both pictures, but also if you have like 3D files, it also works with those. So you can see how those would look in, um, in the scene. So I like this kind of stone here as my base texture for my ground. So make sure that you have your object selected that you want to place your texture on and then grab it and drag it over onto that object. As you might be able to see in the uh, camera view here, here where we are quite close to the ground, well, it's kind of plasticky, flat looking, uh, almost like a matte reflective surface. That's because it doesn't really have any bumpiness to it. It doesn't have any detail. It, it's just a picture applied to the top of an object. So in this case, if you look over here, we have now added the material to our plane, meaning that we now have something in the albedo channel. Albedo is the uh, color surface of an object, but we could also add a normal map. This, of course, means that we need to have a normal map. Normal maps essentially look like this purplish, weird colored maps, pictures that tell the program where the lighting should start to fall off, meaning that it'll create kind of fake shadows essentially in the program. We'll get more into normal maps and then how they are generated later, but it's something that you can get Photoshop to generate or any other online generator if you, if you so desire. But this one hasn't been set as a normal map, even though it's just being called NRM at the end here. So I can go over here in the texture type and change it from default and to normal map. Now I need to click the apply button down here. And now it just knows that this is a normal map. Be aware that if you do this to any other color picture, it will change the way that that picture looks and it'll make your texture look essentially red, actually. So I'm going to click the plane again here. I'm going to scroll down to where I can see my normal map channel here. And I'm going to drag that normal map picture into the normal map slot. And maybe you can see it now. It has a lot of or some extra bumpiness over here. Um, the further you go away, the easier that is to see. So, and you have a scale value for it down here. Currently it's just set to one, but let's just overdo it and set it to five. So you can really see that effect kind of breaking the image, but still you can kind of see what the effect is. Stay in a reasonable amount, like two is probably the max. And then of course one and below one would be better. Let's say you have a giant freaking enormous plane and these stones shouldn't be that size in real life. If you go down, you also have something here called tiling. 
uh, if I set my tiling to 10 by 10, you can see I get this uh, very uh, PlayStation 2 kind of texture look to it where we have uh, just the same texture repeated over and over again. This is of course something that we'll also look at later in the course. So that concludes the basic walkthrough of the Unity interface. Next up, we'll try to import a controller.